Great morning, great morning, guys. Coming to you again with a uh, devotion this morning as I'm on the road. Uh, so thanks for joining me for our Christmas devotional series. We got most of that done. It was very powerful and impactful. And as we continue to post devotions and get into some topics going into 2024, I hope you can join us for this journey. Uh, today, we're just going to talk a little bit on um, does God supply your wants? Does God supply your wants? And I think it's something that has to be taught over and over for repetition to really kick in. Um, does God supply your wants? Because we all know the famous passage, you know, and he shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And many times in churches, we hear them say, he supplies our needs, not our wants. He supplies our needs, not our wants, right? I want to go a little bit deeper for a second. I want to state a few things. Number one, the Bible never contradicts, contradicts itself. The Bible never contradicts itself. The Bible will always prove itself because we believe that the word is uh, without error, right? It's without error. It's perfect. It's complete. We believe it is God's word down to every jot, every tittle, every line, every period, every everything, right? Especially from the original context more than anything else. Um so I, I was just doing some research on that verse itself. Now, <clears throat> I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm saying this morning. And, and when I state what I'm stating, you'll understand where I'm coming from, right? Because we do not believe in the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. And if you put possessions and things in this world before God, not just monetary, but anything you put before God becomes an idol and you never want to do that, right? You never want to put... Uh, sowing and reaping before the salvation message. I believe that the salvation message, the gospel of Jesus Christ is first and foremost and you know everything else comes comes in alignment with that message, right? Because the gospel is for the inward um, change it's for the inner change from the spirit man leading to the outward change. Um, so when we think about does God supply our wants, I want you to think about this. He says that he would give you the desires of your heart in his word as well. If the desire are the desires of your heart a want or a need, it's a want, it's not a need. You don't need the desires of your heart to live, right? It's a want. So if he says he's going to give you a want, then I wonder how we can make sense of that verse that says, and he shall supply every uh, all of your needs according to uh, his riches and glory. And I'm just paraphrasing because I don't have the text in front of me. Obviously, I'm on the road this morning. Right? And then um, when, when the word talks about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these other things shall be added unto you. If a thing is added unto you, things are generally wants. Your needs could be added onto you, but it says all of these other things. It never says just your needs will be added onto you. So if you understand the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible never contradicts itself. When the Bible talks about a hundredfold blessing, uh, when we were talking about that rich man um, that, that didn't want to give away his possessions, and then later on Jesus talked about the hundredfold blessing um, and, you know, in regards to those who do give away all they have and stuff like that. And when the Bible teaches that he would protect the devourer for your sake, and even in the book of Jeremiah, uh, I believe around chapter 29, when he commands them to go in and, and, and you know, to, to, to set up houses and, 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 and a lifestyle in the land and all that stuff. And if you need the references, I can definitely get them for you after. When God gives us this type of message and then we say something like, Lord, we know we trust you for our needs and not our wants. We are making God a... We're saying that his word is contradicting itself, and that is not true. So I was like, maybe we're misinterpreting this. Let me dig deeper. And I encourage you, go ahead and dig deeper yourself and do your own research. Um, we should study to, sh to show ourselves approved, right? <laughs> as, as workmen rightly dividing the, the word of truth and so on and so forth. We, we should dig into his word. We should study hard, meditate on it day and night. So I encourage you to do some research into what the word actually says. When you look into the root word of need, and I'm going to point out two things. The root word of need in the Greek, um, I can't pronounce it. I'm not a Greek scholar. Ch Charia or Charian or something like that. It, it's both used interchangeably for need and want. 
it's used interchangeably for need and want. So if you really think about what's being said here, God will give you what, what you need or what you want in your life, but putting him first has to happen. You must put God first, right? You must seek the kingdom first. So it's not saying he will only supply your needs. He will give you the desires of your heart. He will add all these other things onto you, but the, the key is putting God first. <coughs> Excuse me. The key is putting God first. You must put God first in what you do. If you do not put God first, expect whatever you have to be taken away. I mean, I don't know how much clearer to say it. And, you know, we would have some atheists that would come on and say, oh, God ain't going to take what I have, right? <laughs> Guys, calm down, right? Calm down. If you, that, that, that's a debate for another time. But I'm just saying, you need to put God first and he will give you your, the desires of your hearts, your needs, your wants, and stuff like that. Um, but let's just say, worst case scenario, for the benefit of the doubt, let's just say that that passage does mean need, right? Doesn't your need increase with your vision? Doesn't your need increase with your the size of your need will be determined by the size of your vision and obviously we know that when you have the vision God will give the provision so the size of your need increases by the size of your vision because if you have a bigger ministry a bigger need a, a, a bigger vision for his church to grow a, a bigger uh, a missions ministry whatever it is you need more to keep it going so all of a sudden, the size of your need increases by the size of your vision. So I just want to put that in context because a lot of Christians take a vow of poverty saying, Oh, I just have to get my needs, food on my table, that's it, that's a need. And, and we, we teach the wrong thing from God's word. When go back to the Greek and translate that word, it, it, it talks about necessity but it also talks about a person's want. And we can debate that and we can dispute that for a very long time, right? But guys, I hope that just, just to give you some food for thought on that verse, it's not like this is the final answer, this is the final say, but just to put some food for thought on that verse out there, that he would supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Um, I'm going deeper than the word need. I'm going to what it actually means in the Greek. So if you have something deeper than the Greek, <laughs> should be a revelation from, from God but then again his word is written so I don't know how you can have a revelation aside from what he's already given us in his perfect word but hopefully that gives you some food for thought on the situation uh, the size of your need can be increased the word does not just mean need it means uh, a person's want and need um, so to think that that verse only means what you need in that time to survive is foolish because everyone needs different things to survive um, everyone survives at different levels uh, people eat different things throughout the day so would god give more to one and less to the other um, by all means no right you're gonna get what, you, what, what you're gonna get from god based on how you put him first how you do things like tithing sowing and reaping so on and so forth and that's how you will be blessed and also by your faith which obviously faith without works is dead so hopefully this brings some value to your day i know it was a little bit of a conversation a little bit of a rant a little bit of some different thoughts being thrown out there but hopefully this brings some value to you god bless you take care